Oh, for sure it's stressful. Yeah, my rabbit wheel's just, or my mouse wheel or whatever you want to call it, it's just spinning nonstop going, how can we be just a little bit faster? For this Baja 1000, there is a lot of pressure there. He really wants to do well for Can-Am. He wants it as bad for Can-Am as he wants it for himself. You know, I've told you before, I hate the feeling of race morning. So I just want to like distract my mind and get to the start line as fast as we can. In that sense, he's a little bit like me uh, when I raced. I just didn't want to talk to anybody. Morning. Morning. You sleeping in or what? Hey, coffee man slept in. I had to bring your dad one. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have enough fuel? We need like 180 gallons. It's a lot easier when there's less people around me, you know? When, uh, when it's just like a small group and we're pre-running, it's super easy for me. And then all of a sudden, everybody kind of rushes in. Yo, how far out are you? Okay, I'll see you in a second. It's just, it's just a different atmosphere than we're used to. A different group of people, a lot more people than we normally have down there. It wasn't just my core group of guys. What's up? How you doing, man? What's going on? Crazy, I was thinking about this morning. I'm like, dude, what do we sign up for? Everybody's trying to help so much that sometimes it's almost too many people helping. The other half of our crew show up today. We're getting the final preparations ready, uh, getting the fuel jugs filled up, just going over our uh, notes for our pitch strategy and last minute little things to, to get ready for tomorrow. Yeah, so you've got him at RM226 staged and ready for a visual at the road crossing, but yet he's got to get down here to 300 to help me fuel. He's not going to make it. That was the only thing I saw. So Logan's another uh, factory k and guy. He comes down here and helps us with the ball races, figuring out who takes how much fuel and where. It's like it was just a small group of us pre-running, and then last night we came here, and it was like the intensity was just, it's like, let me do this, do this. When we first started racing, you know, five years ago, I was more hands-on helping him do things. All right, thank you guys. But he's developed to be such a phenomenal uh, organizer that he's just got it together. So we had a little, little bit of a hectic morning with everybody here. I always say I'm gonna rest on the, on the last day and not do anything, but it actually makes me calmer to be in the car instead of sitting here in the hotel. So go top it off the fuel, go run that 30 mile section one more time, and then uh, come back and hopefully relax the rest of the day. Really never having done a race this long is like, in my head just constantly replaying what kind of pace we should push the car, you know? Constantly like bouncing ideas off of everybody. Even though when I bounce an idea off them, I wasn't really gonna listen to what they had to say. For Mexico, the people are awesome down there. Of course, I love Mexican food, so that's a big draw, you know? The children down there are awesome. You're out in the middle of nowhere, and you haven't seen anybody for an hour, and next thing you know, there's 15 or 20 people standing there cheering you on, so it's, it's pretty cool. Any allergies? Nope. Any medical problems? Nope. This race, I got a little different strategy just because it's so long. I know it's gonna be a little more physically exhausting. Every time before the race, we get an IV and hydrate us, and she puts some vitamins and a little concoction in there and gets us dialed in. What does the magnesium do for you? It helps with muscle cramping a lot. Spent a lot more time on strategy to try to take some stress off of me, just so I can really like mentally prepare for this one. Uh, the race starts, we need to be in staging at like 8.15. All right, love you. Bye. Hey Brecken, will you fill the camelbacks with water? Grab that GPS chip out of it too for the Lawrence. It's it's a mission, you know, every every single race to show up with a winning car and a winning attitude and, and Phil and I just being a winning duo, you know, it's like every race we, we come prepared. Good here. Yeah. Where do you want the belt at, Chris? Oh, I'd be, I think, our biggest accomplishment. Just to be able to hang a Baja 1000 trophy on the wall is, is a big thing to Phil and, and to Can-Am. Now we see if a year's worth of work pans out. Nothing more we can do now. It's not terrible. Worst night sleep I've had since we were down here. No more free race day stuff, so it's fine. Yeah. No. It's race day, all day, and tomorrow. Well, race morning, I'm just thinking about like how I can get the time to go by and get in that race car. I only puked in the toilet once and the trash can once. I'm typically in the hotel room with Bo, now I'm in the hotel room with Chris, but I can f sense his nerves, you know? I mean, that's a huge race. He's only raced with me one other time, and now I'm putting him in this race with tons of pressure. See ya. Have fun. Be safe. Hey. Good luck, brother. Yeah, I've seen you a couple miles, huh? Gotcha. Every race morning I go, why do I put myself through this? If I just purely think about the race, I'm gonna get too nervous. If I can distract myself from the actual race, I can stay more calm. 
Bill Burton out of Auburn, California, number 2944. As soon as the flag drops, the nerves are gone. I just, I'm just like, it's just peaceful. I'm just racing. So I'm just gonna go out there, I'm gonna drive my car and have fun, not make mistakes, and then I'm gonna start racing essentially the next day. In my mind, the race wasn't gonna start until mile 1000. He's one of those people I talked about a little earlier, that he goes there to win. You know, you hear about people, they live, eat, and breathe things. That's him, he lives for this. Well, it's kind of all a blur, but I think I got out of the car at like 9.30 at night. Bo knew the pace and we talked about it so much and what we thought it would take to win. And I think Bo did like everything perfect. And we were 15 minutes ahead of the next car. I really wanted to break the other cars out of the race. And then all of a sudden, like, hey, you have a 50 minute lead on them. You only get one chance to win it your very first time out there. So that's what we wanted to do. Long 26 hours. Here we are, our first Baja 1000. It's brutal, but that's what we sign up for. You know, it's desert racing, so. It was a fun, crazy experience for sure. So you beat Baja? What's that? You beat Baja. I think so, I don't know. I think it beat me up too. <laughs> Leading into this whole entire season, I, I've known Can-Am's never won the UTV class at the Baja 1000. We wanted to be the team that was gonna win it for them for the first time ever. Everybody said, like, there's no way you can go through that whole race without putting a wrench on the car, and we never put a wrench on it. I came in was flawless the whole entire time. You know, it's weird for me to think that people are gonna remember Bo and I winning all these races, because to us, it just, like, we've raced since we were little, so it just feels normal to go out there and do it. I never really, like, relish in our race wins, I guess. I, for some reason, that's just, like, an emotion that I don't have. It just feels like we went down there, and we set our plan, and we accomplished it.